which was quite long, so I hope you will bear with me. And I think this is what he wanted me to share with you. So many people were asking, how did you and Joey meet? So this is a little bit of a story of how our okay, baduy man, love came to be. It all began with a strong sense of deja vu. He came into the room in the midst of rehearsal for Pitoy Moreno's Pago Manio. He was wearing a powder blue shirt, blue jeans, dark brown boots. A gold necklace hung from his neck. I was at the opposite side and I glanced at, his, at him as he crossed over to my side. Out of the blue, a voice in my head said, This guy is going to mean something in your life. How weird was that? How could that be when I didn't even know him? Perhaps our meeting was destined because shortly after we were introduced to each other, our choreographer assigned us to be partners in a show segment, simulating boy meets girl, boy goes after girl, girl makes pakipot, but gives in the end. That was the prelude to our love story, set to the music of Apos Ewan. The next evening, Joey showed up at my house and thus begun our courtship. Day after day, week after week, he picked me up for lunch and after school. He wrote me letters daily as well and brought me flowers every Sunday. I don't know why that was. If I had free time in between classes, he would bring me along during his client calls. During those times together, we talked and talked and talked some more. We talked about ourselves, our families, our dreams, our likes, our dislikes. We talked about relationships and the need for total commitment to a loved one. We talked about practically everything under the sun. We discovered common passions, love of family, a strong faith life, enjoyment of food, books, movies, music, and the sea. Sometime during those days together, we fell in love. Our courtship continued. Committed to building a strong relationship, we spent most of our time together. We started coffee and this. No honey, sweetheart, baby or babes for us. I also called him jobs. Our dates were simple, strolling around Manila Zoo, riding the double-decker buses flying across Boulevard, eating lunches, meriendas, and dinners together in quiet restaurants or just hanging around my house. We discovered more and more about each other to like and love. We also started going to Mass together every Sunday and attending novenas Wednesday at Paclara, Fridays in Calcutta Church, wanting and praying for our relationship to be blessed by God so that we could love each other faithfully and steadfastly. We must have gotten this blessing because our relationship was always so easy, so relaxed. During our courtship and going steady period, we hardly ever fought or argued. Everything flowed smoothly, flawlessly. We stepped into each other's worlds and created one together effortlessly. That our parents and families approved of and supported our relationship was an extra blessing. We met in March of 1980, became a couple in April, got engaged in December of the same year, and we tied the knot on June 13, 1981. Father Bill was one of our contemporaries. I was only 21, Joey was 24. Young as we were then, there were no doubts at all in our minds that marrying each other was the best expression of our love. 38 years later, I know more than ever that Joey is God's choice for me. He was not only my husband, but truly my very best friend. I didn't only love him, but I really liked and respected him as a person. There is no other person in this world who I can talk to, laugh with, even over the city things. Sing, eat, sleep, even get bored together, as freely as with Joey. He knew my deepest, darkest secrets. He shared my greatest joys. He, has, he had seen me at my best and stayed by me through my worst, especially when I lost my dad just a little over a year ago. 
He had admired me at my most glam self and had good-naturedly accepted me during my half my hair and comb dressed in a three-day-old duster, nailed chip piece. We still held hands when walking and while he was driving, and there were lots and lots of hugging. He woke me and my children up to noisy, sloppy, wet kisses, which we usually complained about because we had laway put over our foreheads. To this day, or until he passed, we never had very big arguments. There were no raising of voices. There were never any exchanges of hurtful, painful words. We enjoyed our shared passions and have actually passed these on to our children. I have continued to support him. I was his cheerleader, lab mate, food movies, books and partner. But I must admit, during the years of his AAA presidency, I always told him, you have a mistress, her name is Ateneo. Yeah. Joey was also a great son-in-law. His love and respect for my parents is something that I truly appreciate. And what was the ultimate icing of the Joey cake? Of course, is being a great dad. True, from the time they were babies, he was always hands-on, very loving, very affectionate father. Truth is, when they were babies, Joey was the one who woke up in the middle of the night to feed them, change their diapers, as I became a witch when I didn't get enough sleep. He brought them to and from school, and later on work. He played with them, shopped with them, went to the gym with them, and he took them on individual dates for daddy-daughter bonding. My most profound thank you God moments were the ones spent with Joey, Jamie, and Riri. Watching the three of them together was one of my life's greatest joys. When I was thinking about this, it's true what Jamie said. From the time we were in the ER, I told myself if Joey would have chosen a way to go, this was how he would have wanted it. But when my kids and I, on the first night after this cremation, we all woke up in tears. And we were just saying that I always thought I was going to grow old with him. We had talked already because we were empty nesters. Jamie and Ian were already both working. And they were talking about exploring life outside of the Philippines. And of course, I told him no, that again and again. He said, no, you have to give your children wings. And then he said, it's going to be okay because we're going to be together. So I don't know how it's going to work right now. We cried over the fact that they always thought their dad would walk them down the aisle. And that he would have been the super duper coolest lolo because he loved children. Joey was loved by everyone, my family, even to the third and fourth degree. Already, the little girl you see running around Claire, she was Tito Joey's girl. She, he was the only one in her earlier years who could pick her up other than her immediate family. So where we are right now, as Jamie said, um, Joey is in a good place. We are the ones that are going to need all the love and support. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for all the love. I hope I don't forget anyone, but of course we thank our families. From the time I sent out the call out that I was on my way to Medical City because Joey had collapsed, they, many of them came. Nikki, I love you. Thank you for being there for me that day. For my sunshine sisters, Thank you so much for making this mask so beautiful. I keep telling you that Joey was your greatest fan and I'm sure he's very happy right now. To the Ateneo community from his grade school, high school, college classmates, to the AAA, to his um, management and friends, to uh, people like me who closed their office today to be with us, to the scholasticans who tremendously 
came together to support Mr. P. You see, I was Mrs. P to my 20 batches of students, and Joey was the Mr. P. And um, I really am not looking too far into the future. My girls, when they're talking to the friends, many of you have already volunteered to step in when that walk in the aisle is going to happen. We might have to take you up on that offer. Of course, the uncles are the first in line for this. And we just ask you to continue to pray for us, especially for my mom watching. It's been very, very difficult. Joey used to talk to her every single morning and night. He was, she was his good morning. She was his good night. And I didn't get jealous, mommy, from this. <laughs> Um, I was very happy actually that you and me and were spending that much time bonding in the United States. So this is already getting long, but we keep telling us not to say thank you, but we don't have any other words at this point except that you have our love and we thank you so much for yours.